horror games? Why do they scare us? This was going to be a longer intro, but I gave up on that, so let me just ask you. Do you play horror games? If so, why? And also, do they scare you? I mean, legitimately scare you, to the point where you think about them after the fact. Not to philosophize about their deeper meaning, but because you're scared the monster might reach out to you from under your bed. Let's talk about fear in video games. Gather around the fire and let me tell you a tale. I like horror games. I like horror movies. They're both fun to me. I'm not necessarily scared of them, I just think they're thrilling. No pun intended. I want to know what happens next, if the evil wins, how it's defeated if not, what the true secret was. When watching a movie, everything is pretty straightforward. You're in a chair, watching a story unfold. Some more gory than others. I used to be terrified of certain horror movies. The first time I watched a movie like that at all was at my neighbor's house. Scream. Apparently, I looked so shocked after the first... incident in said movie, get off my back YouTube, that my neighbor's mom turned it off and asked me sincerely whether I was allowed to watch these types of movies at all. The grudge haunted me for weeks after watching it. I did not do well with horror movies. Nowadays, I think they're usually just funny. I'm sure I've seen so many that I've become desensitized, but video games also helped. I didn't really play horror games as a kid. I didn't play the first Resident Evil or Silent Hill. I didn't have Alone in the Dark or Eternal Darkness. My first console was a Nintendo 64, and it didn't even have many horror titles to begin with. I didn't have that excuse when I got my hands on a PlayStation 2, though. And I suppose that means my first horror title was Onimusha Warlords. It didn't really scare me, but it did fascinate me. There was blood everywhere, monsters, skeletons, demons, a lot of dead things too. But it wasn't really that part that fascinated me. It was the mystery that came with it. What happened? How did it happen? Who did it? Why? If you're watching this video, then you've probably seen theory or explained videos floating around YouTube before as well. The true story behind Silent Hill. What they didn't tell you about Bioshock. I'm not the only one who loves the mystery. Non-horror games tend to have fairly straightforward stories, except for Kingdom Hearts. So when it comes to explaining what's going on, you don't really need a second person to help you figure things out. But horror titles often use symbolism in their imagery. And partially, that's because it's easier to get things past the censors that way. You can't say certain words explicitly, much like on <clears throat> YouTube, if you know what I mean. But you can create a monster that might be reminiscent of that word, that might represent the word in its absence. It also helps that creating the story in that way makes everything just a little bit more subtle, a little less in your face, and because of that, more mysterious. And everyone loves a mystery. Horror games get us invested on a level beyond just playing the game. Not only do we often have to be on our toes somewhat, that's just the nature of horror gameplay, but we also want to pay attention a little more intently than we otherwise would. Because yes, we're playing the game, but we're also sleuthing. And the first time you play a horror game, that might be nerve-wracking. Your heart's in your throat because a monster is prowling the halls, but you need to figure out this puzzle to move on to the next room and maybe you're out of ammo or hell, you might not even have a weapon. And then the monster gets you. It eats you, tears you to shreds. Game over, try again. A pause, a moment of calm. And you try again, still on edge. But this is a particularly tricky level. So the monster gets you again, and again, and again, and again. And somewhere between all those game over screens, you notice you've lost your fear. Because the mystery of consequences has been solved. The consequence is that you see a game over screen. Mystery doesn't just entice us, drive us to want to know more, investigate further, it also creates fear. In Amnesia The Dark Descent, you're dropped into the game without any way to defend yourself. Your only hope is to run and hide. Even looking at the monsters stalking you can cause a game over. So you don't look, you run, you hide, but then they catch you and you realize that wasn't so bad. So maybe you'll sneak a peek a little longer with your lantern next time and you next realize that the monsters are actually kind of goofy looking. Okay, 
I'm prepared. I got this. I... <laughs> okay, no, but th but this time though, I'm I'm really I I I. <laughs> Okay, but this time, I'm prepared and i Okay, no, for real though, I, I got this. I, I obviously have this. No, 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 hold on. You're not scary. You, you're literally not scary at all. <gasps> you take that back right now. Before you had a clear image of the monster in your head, you created your own. The most horrifying, evil, terrible thing you could possibly imagine. Or rather that you can't imagine. But now, that image has been replaced by this goofy little guy. Instantly, things are less scary. The monsters grabbing you slowly turns into more of an annoyance than a fearful encounter. Instead of yelping in surprise, you sigh and mutter, not again. No matter what horror game you play, if you see the monsters often enough, deal with them often enough, you eventually stop being afraid. And that is where phobias come in. When I was a little girl, I almost drowned twice. The first time, I got tangled in pool floaties underneath a bigger pool float. I was surrounded by other people, and nobody noticed a thing. I had to free myself on my own, barely. I was eight or nine. The second time, I was alone in an inflatable boat in the middle of a deep lake. The boat flipped over in the undertow, and because I couldn't swim with my eyes open, I accidentally swam down instead of up only realizing what I was doing when I felt the water getting colder. I briefly opened my eyes and stared directly into the void, the sun in the opposite direction. I felt myself getting lightheaded while desperately clawing my way back to the surface. A few seconds of swimming felt like hours and I was terrified. Thalassophobia is a fear of the ocean, of the unknowable dark waters of the sea of the hidden depths of an otherwise unassuming lake. It's an irrational fear because most water is perfectly safe. There are no monsters in the swimming pool, and the lake I nearly drowned in does not contain any life at all, outside of a single white sturgeon, apparently. But to a brain on phobia, that doesn't matter. It fills in the blanks a little too well. I never used to have thalassophobia until I nearly drowned twice. Now, when I look at a large body of water, I feel vaguely uncomfortable. Don't ask me to swim in it. That problem reappeared while playing video games. I was given a Nintendo 64 on my 10th birthday. With it, Mario 64. I'd only had a single near drowning back then, so when I encountered the eel in Mario 64, I was a little flustered, but nothing I couldn't deal with. I could also mostly ignore the level. It wasn't until sometime later when I borrowed Zelda Majora's Mask that I really noticed that the water wasn't very fun to me. Majora's Mask will, at a certain point in the game, ask you to jump into the water to dive all the way to the bottom of an eel pit. The eels made a loud noise when they popped out of their hiding places, and their eyes had an eerie glow. I hated this pit. I hated it so much. I got through it, but I really didn't want to be there. I didn't really play anything particularly water-based after that, but when I did, it was Subnautica. A few things had changed since Majora's Mask at this point. It nearly drowned a second time, the graphics had improved substantially, and first-person mode was used to great effect. I tried to play this game the first time, found myself running away from a leviathan far, far in the distance, and dropped it immediately. I just couldn't get myself to try and explore the ocean to dive into the darker parts of the water because I was afraid. Not horrified at the sight of a monster, but terrified at the thought of one. The second time I tried to play Subnautica, I made it my business to dive into the darkest part of the water in one go when I got there. Just do it. What's the worst that could happen? I psyched myself up before jumping in. It's just a game. These are just pixels. It isn't me, it's a character. At most, you'll reach a game over screen after seeing the monster and you'll be less terrified next time. This is easy. Come on, Al. And then I dove. And I dove. And I started shaking, sweating, and hyperventilating. I started crying. I couldn't do it. Despite 
My loud insistence that this was fine and nothing bad could possibly happen, and it couldn't, my brain did not agree. Yes, phobias are irrational, and I knew that. But surely, I thought, surely not in a video game. Surely here, I can deal with it, I can fight it. But I couldn't. And not just in Subnautica. I played Outer Wilds a while back, and without spoiling anything, it had some instances of water-based or water-like environments. One of them contained danger, and I couldn't deal with them either. The second, I had my Twitch chat reassure me throughout the whole thing while I loudly proclaimed the water to be space, actually. It was just space, not water, not water at all. I was just floating in space and this was fine. I felt completely mad and I was incredibly disappointed in myself at the same time. Why couldn't I conquer my fear, even in a game? It really is a graphical problem, in part. I played Dave the Diver recently, and that game has you dive to the bottom of the ocean too. And I won't be spoiling any part of the story here whatsoever, but I do want to show you a small scene from said bottom of the ocean that includes a singular boss. So if you'd like to skip that, here's a timestamp. I'll wait. Okay. Are they gone? Right. This boss right here. By all accounts, this should freak me out. These sorts of things are exactly what bother me about the ocean. Monsters in the dark. But everything is pixels, and it's 2D, not 3D. That's strike one. I could manage. But importantly, this game has background music. Everywhere. Subnautica and many ocean gameplay works heavily with ambience. You'll hear your breath, the bubbling and rushing of the water, the echoes of faraway creatures or a fish diving around you. This is the music playing during this boss battle. <sighs> There's too many of them. I can't possibly defeat them all. Unless... This is hype music. I was ready to fight and that's another point for Day of the Diver. I could fight. I had underwater weapons and knew how to use them. On top of that, Dave is nimble. He can dash, turn and shoot with ease. A lot of games with water levels especially will give you some sort of debuff when you enter the water. You might be slower than you are on land. Perhaps you can't use your items and in most cases, you'll have a breath meter. Your time underwater has a limit. Dave has a breath meter too, but it actually functions more like an HP bar instead. It's very big and it's quite generous in how often you can refill it while underwater too. Finally, Dave the Diver isn't in first-person mode. Looking at your character from a distance places some mental distance between them and you as well. You are not Dave the Diver. That is not your character. You are controlling him and making sure he gets through another day so he can have some sushi and feed the cat. If anything happens to Dave, then that's okay. You can fix it. When you lose, what actually happens is Dave makes it to the surface just fine but he had to drop most of his loot on the ocean floor to manage it. That's all. He doesn't even get a game over screen. He's fine. When you're in first person mode instead, you assume your character's guise. You're looking through their eyes. And not only that, it limits your view to begin with. I can see what's above, below, in front and behind Dave at any given time. In Subnautica, I can only ever see what's in front of me. If a monster is sneaking up on me, I won't know until I turn around and stare it down. For a lot of people, that's a great thrill. It's one of the main ways games build tension. Lack of vision, anxiety-inducing ambience, and limited available actions. If you can get all of that right, you'll probably have a great horror game. A fun horror game, even. And I agree. When I'm playing Alien Isolation. On land. 
sort of. Some of it's water. Fuck it. For me, the difference between being afraid because of a phobia and being afraid because of a monster is this. My brain somehow finds it impossible to see the water as fake. I can't convince it of the difference between pixel water and actual water. Whereas in the case of a horror game in general, with zombies and vampires and aliens, it isn't just a case of this isn't real. It's a case of this isn't realistic. Zombies don't exist. Vampires don't exist. Aliens don't exist. I don't have to convince my brain that they don't exist, because they don't. Water does. And water does have predators. Video games in that respect have an edge over movies. I can watch movies about the deep ocean without issue, even if they're horror movies. That's because just like a 2D game, I can take my distance. I am in no way responsible for what happens on that screen. A 3D first person game, however, sees me making the decisions. It needs me to be in control, to escape or fight monsters, to make it out in one piece to continue the game. I have to actively put my character in that situation and then navigate it. So does that mean I can never again play video games containing H2O? No, actually, I've decided to move in the opposite direction. I love horror games. I take joy in trying to piece things together, in the sneaking, in resource management, but I used to be scared of them. Nowadays, I'm not genuinely scared of any horror game anymore. Jump scares will get me, especially when I'm focused, but that's not fear, that's a reflex. And if I can get used to anything a horror game has to throw at me, then why not a phobia too? Exposure therapy is a thing that exists, and as far as I know, the only way to get past a phobia, while avoiding your phobia triggers, can actually make things worse. So instead of never playing water games ever again, I'm going to start playing a lot of them. Starting slow with calmer, non-combat based ones that don't contain any fully pitch black oceans yet. And then Abzu, Silt, Iron Lung, and eventually Subnautica. Wish me luck. Thankfully, a lot of phobias in real life are fairly easy to avoid, depending on the type. Anemophobia, the fear of air, is probably extremely debilitating every single day. Whereas domatophobia, a fear of houses, is easily avoidable as long as you're a millennial. Do you have any phobias? If you're willing to share, of course. If so, what kind? And do they ever pop up in your games? Certain games like Horizon Forbidden West apparently have a thalassophobia mode now, so devs are definitely catching on to these things, possibly losing them a sale here and there. Either way, I hope your day is going well, and until another tale finds us.